I am Lou with another episode of My Car Story and today I'm with Ron Clark, no stranger to the channel and Ron has, well, an extremely rare Volkswagen. The, Volkswagen. The, the Volkswagen. <laughs> so, so let's jump right in. We're out in Arizona and uh, enjoy it with us. We thought at this time when the country's having some challenges, we're going to bring some smiles to you and this car, well, you'll see. So Ron, let's start with you. First of all, uh, thanks again for connecting with me today. And uh, tell me what year, make, and model we have. Well, it's a 1949 Volkswagen, coach-built with under the auspices of the Volkswagen factory, Hebmuller, two-seat, cabriolet. That's a mouthful. Now come right alongside me. Let's take a look at the profile of this. Come right alongside me. Matter of fact, let me just show your shirt, which is where we're going. And here's the and logo. Then, <laughs> and then that logo right there as well. Now, Heb Mueller is the car. That's the name of the company that builds the car. Name of the company. And this is the town. And what is a car 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 is the means a uh, body builder. Got it. Body builder. Now, let me take you right. Come on alongside with me, Ron. And take a look at this. Now, what was the first year for the bug? Was this Actually, it? Actually, the first year for this car was December of 1948. They built one. So this is as early as it goes. And how many of these were, you were sharing with me, how many were supposed to be made and how many were made? The original contract was for 2,000 from the factory in Wolfsburg. They would basically ship the running gear down to Verpital where the Hepmuller company is located. And then Hepmuller who had a track record of building very high quality, solid chassis, was able to have a two-seat Cabriolet pillarless that was structurally sound enough uh, that would not shake, rattle, and roll. So that's why the company got the contract. And then in 1949... Come just a little closer so I more production. I want people to listen to the sound of this. Listen to this. That's, that's unbelievable yeah, for 1949. Is. And uh, what they did is they reinforced the A pillar, which is where you see the which is right windshield. Here. That's, a different, that's a different design uh, pillar and windshield from the bug. Uh, and that whole A pillar all the way down to the floor is, uh, is reinforced along with, instead of having just a floor pan like the Beetle has, it had a Z structural frame to make the rest of the car uh, hold together solidly. And let me show some people the front of this one. So this is somewhat of kind of the holy grail of the bugs because... Uh, That's what people call it, the holy grail of the bug. The holy There were probably 20 or 25 different body companies that uh, used Volkswagen running gear to have a spe special body, so there was Gomich and, and uh, well, a variety of them. Dan and Hour and Staus. See the VW right there? Uh, but basically, people really fell in love with the Hebmuller. Now, the thing that made it so rare is that in the summer of 1949, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday when the factory was closed, there was a fire. And it shut down the production of the car. Uh, From the fire. People have never found out about the arson, but it was believed to be, you know, fire by desire. Fortunately, they were able to get back in production in August, and so this car was built in September after the fire, but it was downhill financially from then on, and, and that was kind of the demise of the Hebmuller. So they ended up making, we think, somewhere around 684 to 695 head mullers in the last 12 when the company uh, was closed down because of bankruptcy. The last 12 bodies were shipped up to, the last 12 chassis were shipped up to the Carmen factory, which was making the four-seat Cabriolet uh, in Osnabrück, Germany, and they finished off the last of the head mullers. Let's take so, a look at the interior, shall we? Because as sure. you're talking about the interior, um, you know, that's kind of the logo that we look for, but yet you can see... Now, this is accurate, too. Uh, it's kind of interesting. This is painted, whereas the aftermarket, if you don't have the actual thing, is 
Yeah, they're, not they're, painted. They're empty. There, yeah. uh, space is in there. Um, anything? Uh, I noticed there was a lock on this door. I don't think there was a lock on that side. Yeah, you're very observant. I never realized that. But uh, tell me about the flags here. Are so, those just something you put uh, on? I'm a catamaran racer. Okay, all right, so. got it. All right. <laughs> those are supposed to be yachting flags. That's a little uh, artist license. And let our, <laughs> no problem. Tell me now. I noticed there was a tag on your windshield that says there's a registry. How many of these cars are in the registry? Well, it's a good question. Uh, I think that there are around 50. Five zero. Five zero. Strangely enough, the most of them appear to be in Belgium. Belgium. Uh, and Switzerland. Come on along with me. Uh, there are a couple in Southern California. No, nope. And we, believe it or not, there's two of them in Arizona. Two in Arizona. So I want to show the back. Well, I'm going to stand back for a second to show the back. Now there's something right off the bat when you come to the back of this one that's unique. Tell me about this trunk because you can see it has, and I'll stand back a bit. That trunk is this distinguishing feature of the, of the styling of the car. And uh, that, if you get an angle, you'll see the, what they call the Pope's nose. And in there is the uh, brake, brake light as well as a license plate light. But the joke was when, uh, when this car was designed, some of the Germans said, well, we can't tell if it's coming or going. And coincidentally, in the United <laughs> States, the same year, Raymond Lowy Studebaker came out in 1948 with uh, first by far with the post-war car. And Bob Hope used to make fun of the Studebaker saying, you can't see whether it's coming or going. So I guess they have something in common. They have something in common. I'm taking my time on this car because it's so amazing. All right, back to the interior. Now share with me, we've got uh, solid windows on this one because in the back seat, Stand on that side if you would, Ryan. Show them how this back seat works, because it's not really a back seat. It's supposed to be a two-seater. It says Vice Sitzer, two-seater. Now, what's that mean? It's Vice two, two Sitzer seat, two-seater. And uh, like I say, Carmen had the contract for 2,000 of the four-seaters. What they call those? They call those four-seater cabriolets as well. What they call them and in German? And you see those today running around. What they call them in German, though? Cabriolet. Okay. Yeah. They, uh, they didn't call them something like Vosnitz or something? Yeah, uh, the, uh, you'll see them because they have the big bustle back to hold the, to hold the uh, okay, big, top. Okay, yeah, the big, the big back yeah. end. And that's what's so, why everybody loves a Hebmuller because even though it has a padded top and is structurally sound for the German winters and so forth. It fits in here. It fits in nicely and it has such a sleek look. And then as you were going to mention, this uh, folds that's up for little cool. kids or whatever. That's this is kind of a jump fantastic. seat. Fantastic. That's great. Now let me. Obviously, having the top down helps because you really get the chance to see the interior. And this, this blue ribbon, this won first place in the uh, Arizona Biltmore Concourse to Elegance. Uh, now that's a big deal. It's a big deal. That's that's These a cars rough came show. from all over the world. Yeah, those you've and got everything there. There is a. There was one uh, one grouping of cars which were called avant-garde, and this one uh, won the avant-garde category. I see a um, couple of things: a wheel that looks like a that's gas accelerator. Bar. So you just step on the wheel. Step on the wheel. Step on the wheel. Now tell me what the little there's a little lever at the top in the center there. That is uh, reserve gas. Reserve gas, and then there's a. Um, a dimmer switch. Dimmer switch. And then this is uh, venting. That's the uh, hood. Hood. Release. Hood release. L. Over L here. is uh, the choke, which is a German word for Luft, meaning air. So okay. it's an air air flap air flapper. Air flapper. Obviously, our brake, our clutch, three speed. Four. Four. And H for heat. Heat. Got it. Tell me about this steering wheel. Uh, that's interesting. That that's called a bat wing steering wheel. And uh, the original Volkswagen, the one the first one it was built in '48, and the first probably first four months of production in '49, used a steering wheel that you'd think came right off of a John Deere. <laughs> and big, big so it was wheel. a big deal when they came out with the Batwing steering wheel because it was you know considered really big time. And uh, that we believe came out 
in uh, August or September of 49. And the instrumentation is just simple, beautiful. Is this something, this looks Those like it's from... Those are just badges that I've been able to collect throughout the okay. years that are uh, period correct period badges. Period correct badges. I'll feature those. And you'll notice it's in kilometers, not miles per hour. Ah. So you see it goes up to like 120. Yeah. That'd be around, well, 0.62. So it'd be around 70 miles, 72 okay. miles an hour. And this is what lights? That's uh, lights and wipers. Wipers, and then and show them what this indicator. is. Turn that on so they can show them what that does. And I, I don't want to miss this feature. This mirror section here you shared with me is extremely difficult to get because it flips up when the top when comes When the top up. is up, uh, there's a glass rear window, which again makes it a cabriolet as opposed to a roadster. Um, and then this flips around. Uh, to be the same level, eye level, as the back window. Yeah. And that is extremely, it's a one-piece deal with the original. Yeah, take a look at that. What they called Isenglass. Um, windscreen. Windscreen. Or, or sun sun deflector. Show, show them how that works. So okay. if you, you turn yeah. that, I'll show you on this side. <clears throat> That's the... Uh, trafficator. Trafficator, or a semaphore. And the Germans call it a Mach Nix stick. Mach Nix meaning, oh, it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> so if you pull the right one out, that probably means you're going to turn left. If the left one goes out, you're probably going to turn right. Mach Nix. Mach Nix. <laughs> All right, so we'll close that. And as he shuts that, it goes back in there. All right, now, I, I, I absolutely want to see under the hood because uh, under the, the, the frunk, the front trunk, show them what, what we've got here. Okay, this is uh You've got some treats on this on this one. I'm holding my head because I know where we're going. <laughs> so here we've got our wiring system, as you can see, very it's all basic. six volts and uh your gasoline it's obviously fused here. and so forth. Uh, do you use this as your gas st stick? Is that what this is? Like you put it down there is, to figure out how much gas you got? It's a very rare gas stick from Costco. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, this tells me how much gas is in there. It. They actually they do make a uh, which I should get, but they do make a uh, a stick. It's a fuel stick. Yeah, it's got a little markings. This on is it perfect. So the Costco but fuel stick. But this has got to be the best. That know. is the best. Now speaking of the best, show now we've got this box in front of this rim. Show them what's in the box. That's a very uh, rare item, and it's a tool kit. Which That's is very efficiently laid out, of course. Great. Including spark plug pullers, uh, pliers, screwdrivers, fan belt. Uh, Look at that. The thing what? that makes, there are companies that make knockoffs of this. But the way you can tell if these are true yeah. reels, they are the Hazet company in Germany with painted wooden blue screwdriver wooden handles and the hazet usually so this has never been bye -bye. this has never been touched so uh, that's, that's a very rare piece great <laughs> and hopefully you don't need it but yeah right right, nice right. Well, so, so far so good so far since so 1949 good. okay that was delightful let's show them the uh, engine compartment okay we'll close this all right and it, there's a hinge there Pretty self-explanatory. Just a little karate chop, and it's all, it's all. Everything is solid up. as a rock on this car. It's just absolutely amazing. And you found this one, you said in 2004. What made you? What made this car something? You said I gotta have this. I've always been a nut on bathtub Porsches, 356s. As you know, we have quite a few. But um, which will feature in the future because people will ask. Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the uh, Hebmuller. Uh, was like you said, the granddaddy, or I forget the word. The you Holy used. Grail. The Holy Grail. The Holy of Volkswagen. Grail Volkswagen. And there's something about this car that is so <laughs> so neat. So, now, are these just reflectors, or there's actually lights in there? Those are lights and reflectors. Lights and reflectors. And now and that's kind of interesting because you know people didn't really think about that kind of technology. Yeah. Show them what we got under here. This is. Uh, this big, powerful hotshot engine. 
This is uh, come right. Yeah, perfect. I was gonna say I just want to make sure I get the sun right on it. This is a uh, 25 horsepower flat four air cooled six volt single stroke carburetor Weber carburetor. Um, That's just great, isn't it? And it's 1131 cc's, so it's not even 1200. See the six volt. This is just like um, the other interesting thing. It's like a museum piece. We're getting a chance to see. Tell me what this is, Ron. That's a hole for the <laughs> a crank. We just if crank it right that, onto there. You notice that? Yep. You notice that? That not there with the <laughs> hole in it. <laughs> you just turn it right through. So, if need be, you can put a crank in there. Ah, oh, that is great. And there's a. You can see the indentation. Yeah, you can really get a picture of the Pope's nose yeah. when you just look at it this way. I've never looked at it like that, but uh, yeah, it's really that. pronounced. That's great. It's really good. You'll never see this more bright either. I'm telling you, that'll be probably the best shot you'll ever have of that. You're right. That's great. All right, Ron, we need to to fire it we need to, to hear it run and then we'll give it a uh, we'll we'll keep it open for the moment so people can see it okay move and uh, then we'll show a little drive-by and we'll enjoy it go ahead let me have okay. you jump on in Sounds great. Absolutely wonderful. Well, it smells good, doesn't it? It does. Oh, it sounds cool. sounds great. All right, we'll close that up. I want to give them one more overall shot of the beautiful body lines of this one. The Holy Grail Volkswagen. <laughs> Let me stand back. And that... Well, that'll make you smile. Thanks for watching. So here we are having some fun in the Volkswagen. Let's just show you the ride. It's got that distinctive wine to it that, that uh, actually <laughs> is uh, what people really love. And that's really not the engine as much as it is the fan. And when Porsche went to uh, water-cooled engines, yeah, they worked like the devil to get that fan sound for a water-cooled engine, and couldn't quite do it. So the purest, you know, they uh, it doesn't sound right to me. <laughs> oh, it sounds great. That sound sounds great. Isn't it? All 25 horsepower. Yeah, all 25 horses yelling. We look it up and walk. Uh, <laughs> Took it up and walk. You know, it'll, it's the, the, the odometer or the speedometer set for 120 kilos, but it'll, I'm not having to hand it that high, but I've had it up to 60, about 68 miles an hour. That's moving. Yeah. We'll lift, we'll lift people's spirits. Let them share with us with the sound, the beautiful sound behind us. Yeah. Sure, this was an option. 
the clock. clock. Yeah. And there was also a different option, which you didn't have, but it was the radio. So the Telefunken radio. Okay. Uh, you've probably seen them. You know, they've got all the towns in the world on them and so forth. They're push button. They're very nice and very rare. Have you ever seen one? Oh yeah. And okay. the clock here. Okay. I've seen. I've never seen one. I've seen pictures. You set the clock. Yeah. Okay. Around. Clock set right there. Got it. Well, Ron, this is a blast. It's always good to see you. I look forward to seeing you again in the future. And uh, thanks again for giving us a ride in your car and letting us be on my car story. Ron's letting me drive the Volkswagen, the holy grail of Volkswagens. On a perfect day. It's not synchro, that's not Lou not knowing how to clutch. <laughs> but this is just uh, an absolute treat to, uh, to be driving here in this car. That is, isn't it? It's pretty peppy That's for 25 kind of horsepower. It's very responsive. The uh, the gear ratios that they chose for this car are, are really adapted, I think, more for performance than they are for uh, top speed. Because it seems to have a lot of torque at the low end. Yeah, it, it shifts wonderfully. It drives fantastically. It's very smooth, too, as long as you're consistent yeah. in putting it in the gear. And then you notice how light the steering is because yeah, there's no weight. Light. Yeah. Well, Ron, such a treat. Wonderful time getting together with you. Good. Extra bonus getting to drive your car. Well, I'm glad you're driving it. <laughs> thanks Somebody a lot. needs to drive it. Thanks, thanks so much.